It is a real joy to be working with our foundation and our district, serving as our district foundation chair. And we are so blessed to have such talented people working with us to fulfill the, the mission of our organization. With us today are past district governor, Richard Gilman, who is serving this year as our annual fund giving chair, and Doug Gill, who's working with major donors. You know, the foundation means different things to different people. And you guys are giving a whole lot back to the organization to help others create a personal relationship with the foundation and with giving. Um, I know that Richard served for many years uh, in foundation work with various clubs and served as our district governor. Richard, why don't you tell us a little bit about what got you involved with working with the foundation and a little bit about your Rotary story? Well, I joined Rotary in 1986, which was a good year because uh, we started letting women into Rotary or they started coming in. And we also uh, started the uh, polio eradication program. And uh, I'm a polio survivor myself. So I thought, what a neat idea to uh, raise money to stamp out polio all over the world. And that's our major project in Rotary. And we've been doing that for mm, 20 years now and only two countries left, but you've I just got involved in, in Rotary Giving through the uh, through that reason, and then I got involved in various clubs um, pushing the foundation giving through annual giving, encouraging uh, Rotarians to donate money every year. And Rotary's initial project was to do every Rotarian every year <clears throat> $100. And that was simple, because Rotary clubs would just um, add $25 to their quarterly dues. And, and that makes a lot of sense. In fact, we still have the every Rotarian every year award that many of our clubs within our district receive every year because you have to average $100 per member and every member must give at least $25. And some clubs, they may have that one holdout who doesn't want to give 25, but someone will give it on their behalf yes. <laughs> so they can hit that award uh -huh. number and $100 per Rotarian well, that's lower than our average giving within the district. And so for many clubs, this is a first type of thing that they want to achieve is that every Rotarian every year, and it's real easy when you put in the due structure, but it's not that difficult even if you don't. But the problem with that though is, <clears throat> that was in 1986. <clears throat> the world changed and the stock market's gone up and $100 is not a lot of money anymore. So, you know, I encourage people to go beyond and donate more, just like your church and other groups, you uh, want more money than what we used to give for various charity projects. But um, the annual giving uh, is just, it needs to be raised to an, a larger amount, but most Rotarians don't think about it because they're not bothered with it. So one of my jobs is to go around to clubs and to talk to individuals about making donations in addition to what comes out of their dues. and. Um, I, it's, I, I found that talking to a Rotary Club is fine, but I've been more successful talking to individuals. So I'll come to a Rotary Club meeting and I'll sit with some people that I already know what their giving is because I, I use the cheat sheet and find out ahead of time who the givers are and who the um, people aren't giving enough. And I can know some people, you know, they can afford to give more than 100, but nobody's asked them. I think the givers, they want to keep giving. And well, that's Bill, one of the things that Doug has worked with, with working with major donors. I used to think major donors were few and far between and difficult. And Doug's like, no, we're with, blessed with an abundance of wealth here. And we have abundance of major donors and people who become major donors just because someone like Richard or Doug sat down with them and talked to them about the need for the foundation and how to do it. Well, Bill Richard was right. 25 years ago, table stakes might have been $100. Uh, today, I think it's Paul Harris Society. Uh, I'm thinking $1,000 a year is table stakes in 2021. And, you know, quite honestly, when you hear major donor, the first thing that comes to your mind is a wealthy philanthropist just wrote a big six-figure check. Uh, no, not at all. Anyone can become a major donor in our district uh, and in Rotary International. It's simple. Uh, $90 a month, less than $100 a month, uh, you know, in, in less than 10 years, you can hit major donor level one status, which is $10,000. Uh, 
Um, the interesting thing, too, uh, the way Rotary has set up the recognition levels within major donor is major donor level two is not 20,000, it's 25,000. And major level donor three is 50,000. Uh, so it doubles, uh, you know, it keeps uh, growing exponentially uh, with each successive level. Um, so it's a, a great goal to have out there. And who can argue with the mission uh, of the foundation? We all know the great work it does. Richard just talked about Polio Plus and some other things. Um, and, and really, uh, I don't know of any other charity I give to that ultimately 100 cents of every dollar I contribute goes, um, you know, to, to a need. Uh, I think that's fantastic. That Paul Harris Society being the entry level for a lot of people, I think makes a lot of sense. It was years ago that we had a foundation chairperson uh, by the name of Bill Perryman. I don't know if y'all remember Bill Perryman, Perryman Financial, but he, he came out and talked to clubs about how you may have given last year, but it's like the church. You gave your money last year, but they need your money again this year because they already spent it and there's more work to be done. And especially with the type of work that we're doing every year, there's a need and we should get in the habit of meeting that need. And they talked about $1,000 a year. 20 years ago, when I first started in Rotary, I did not have a lot of wealth or ability and that seemed unobtainable. But automatically drafted from a credit card. And he said, start it. If you don't like it, you can stop it. Right. It's easy to stop. Well, that was years ago. I never stopped it. And you just do that enough times, you do hit the major donor. Well, Bill, I've been in Rotary for 25 years now to think if I had gotten started the first year of Rotary, I'd be hitting major level donor status too. No problem. Thousand dollars a year. It's easy peasy. But uh, it, if you have a bad year, <clears throat> The way it's, I like the way Rotary tracks your donations. <laughs> so if you had a bad year and well, I can't do $1,000 this year, that doesn't mean you can't be a major donor. It just means it's going to take you a little longer to get there. That's but right. uh, that's the best part of it. We're looking for that extra charitable donation for some folks. And Rotary should become a favorite charity for even non-Rotarians because so much of the money goes to where it's supposed to go. And so I'm grateful to be able to contribute when I have the ability to do so. And People will write bigger checks every so often. That's right. In fact, Richard, you're wearing a symbol of one of those types of years. Can you tell them all about it? Well, and, and point to the symbol I'm talking about. Oh, this is um, um, a white hat, like a Western hat. And it's called the White Hat Society. And um, anybody who donates $5,000 in one year uh, can get a white hat. And every time you donate another 5000 uh, in another year, then they give you another white hat that's got a little uh, conch on it. That's, right. that's and that's not cumulative. That's a one year, $5,000. Right. Uh, you, yeah. And but it, 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 that money counts towards your major donor. We have a number of people within our district that have done m wonderful gifts to Rotary International. And, you know, I'm amazed that it doesn't have to be dollars. It's not running a check every time. I'm talking to folks who gave highly appreciated stock. They worked for a company that went public. They had a lot of stock that went way up. And they're like, if I sell it, huh, capital gains is still something and it may change. Oh my gosh, they're talking about changing capital gains, to ordinary income rates or something like that. I mean, they're like, I don't want to sell it and then pay all the taxes if I want to give the money to charity. Right. So they gift highly appreciated stock. People gift ranches. Sure. They give property. <laughs> the, the, the family inherited property that nobody's visiting anymore. And they get the charitable deduction on the front end. Uh, Tell us some of the things that you've seen that people have been able to give and how that works out in their overall financial planning, because that is what you do like for a living, isn't it? Uh, it is. It is wealth advisory. Um, thank you, Bill. Uh, you, you're absolutely right. You just hit on all of it. Um, any sort of appreciated property can be contributed to the foundation. It qualifies for that purpose. Um, and, and as you say, the beauty of it is um, all of that appreciated value goes tax free. Uh, onto the charity. So it's a real multiplier, a real leverage tool um, in giving appreciated assets. And uh, especially if it's short term uh, gains too, if you've got a short term capital gain, gift it uh, to the foundation because you're going to be saving yourself over a third uh, of, of taxes. That's right. You don't pay the taxes. The charity doesn't pay the taxes. No one pays. No one pays the taxes. Of course, the poor government doesn't get their money. That's right. Uh, okay. All right. We live with that. We'll uh, live, we're, we're good we, with that. We live with that. And then as far as recognition levels, um, I guess the highest recognition that we have within Rotary, we have a few members that are the Arch Comp Arch Society Comp members. Society. 
Tell us about that, because that's cumulative as well. Arch Klump uh, is cumulative. Um, he is the individual, I understand it, who made the first contribution to the foundation uh, and got it started. And uh, that level of giving is $250,000. Uh, and again, it's cumulative. So White Hat Society uh, contributions, Paul Harris Society contributions, they all add up. Whether it's appreciated property, cash, um, we'll take it all. Uh, and, and we want to get to that 250 level for every Rotarian. Beautiful. And Richard, I know that you're involved with the annual fund giving, yet you're wearing the In Polio Now shirt, which is a total another place. It's like with the Rotary, they've got several buckets you can put the money in. And I've talked to a few treasurers and said, whoops, last year we gave all the money to one or the other. And we, we didn't realize how the money gets divided up and which one should we support? And what's the answer? Which one should we support? The annual fund. The annual fund is a program that uh, the money that comes in Half of it comes back to our district. So, uh, and that money is used uh, in to help the district and matching funds in the district and global grants are the same thing. If you match that money that goes to the annual fund, it doesn't go specified to polio or to- uh, uh, Peace scholars or Peace scholars. disaster relief uh, disaster or relief. all those other things that are Those out are there. things, but annual fund is the one that <clears throat> is usually what the clubs most like to to fund. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's the money that comes back to be directed by our individual clubs and the district. And with almost half the money coming back, they've changed the rules a little bit on that, but as almost half the money comes back, it allows us then to do a combination of district matching grants, which can be local or international, and global grants, which are international grants, but we can even do them locally by being the, uh, it, it, they used to call them reverse global grants, but they don't like that terminology any longer, but it is basically, we're doing the global grant here and another Rotary Club is supporting us from elsewhere. That's great because we love what the mission of the organization is and we love supporting the mission of the organization, but then being able to direct specifically what's important to us right here, that's done through the annual fund giving. And the annual fund giving every year is important because what we get three years from now to distribute among the projects within the Rotarian uh, interest and our club interest in our district is based upon the giving three years prior. And that ability to simply log in to the foundation or call your, your foundation chair and your club, find out what your balance is. It's a great thing uh, to have access to and it allows you to know how much you need to go to hit major donor status. Uh, it couldn't be easier. I love what you guys are doing. I think major gifts is a great place annual giving, that's where the money comes back to us yeah. right here to decide a portion where we're going to put it to work. And we've talked about so many great projects that have been funded internationally and locally because of these dollars. I mean, this is really what makes Rotary hum. And for a lot of people, it's what makes road Rotarians true Rotarians. And I hope all y'all reach out to these great individuals <laughs> to ask them to come to your club, to share, even just a five minute before the meeting starts, little foundation minute. This is the real heart of our organization. And I love working with you guys to raise some money and spend some money to do some good work worldwide. God bless you.